is no greater calling than that. Amen. We're always looking for our calling. You know, we're always saying, God, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Oh, I don't know. What do you want me to do? When actually, he just wants us to be followers of Christ. You know, I tell our worship, our worship team, you know, they're, they're looking for that, that definition of worship. And the definition of worship is this, to be a Christ follower. Because you're, you're living your life as a worshiper through being a Christ follower. That's, that's it. It's pretty simple. It's pretty simple. So that's, that's, that's where we're starting and that's where we're ending tonight. We're, we must be about our Father's business. Pastor has been talking about that so much in the recent past. And I hope you're heeding to every, every message that comes forth from this house, whether it is pastor in the pulpit or whether it is those who have been in the pulpit filling in for him because every single thing that's being taught, that's being preached um, from this house is what the Father desires us to learn, to know, and to um, have a revelation of in our lives. Amen? So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm filling in tonight. And I don't take that lightly, lightly you know. I really don't. Um, because there's, there's a responsibility when you share the word of God. You, you, better, you better have, you, you better know what you're doing. Amen? Amen? And in, in and of myself, I do not know at all what I'm doing. But I know that God is bigger than that. And I know that God has a word for us tonight. And so that's what we're going with tonight. You know, I've had a lot of things stirring on the inside of me in the recent past. I mean, lots of things. And I'm trying to narrow it down. You know, I'm trying to, okay, God, what do you want? What do you want? What, what, what direction should we go? You know, and I'm listening to, to other people speak. And I'm listening, and I'm listening to some faith-filled um, pastors that, that um, pastor listens to that, that are building me up on the inside, that are revealing, that are just pouring into us. And so in doing that, you know, I could go 15 different directions. So I'm just believing with all of that, God's going to narrow it down, even as we speak here. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So um, God is so good to us. And I love the way that this little video said um, he's called us to be a disciplined follower of Christ, to live by his word, live out his word, be grounded in his word, to pass on faith, to pray, and to develop an intimate relationship with him, understanding that our lives are not our own, understanding that it's not about us, but it is about completing the call it is about carrying out the call that God's given to each one of us. And um, so that, that is a privilege. You know, I, 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 I kind of titled this this evening, and I am not good with titles, but, but I kind of titled this this evening, Believers and Disciples. Because here's what I'm learning as I'm, I'm seeking God along the way, is that there's a difference. There's a difference between being a believer and a disciple of Christ. And here's the difference to me. And maybe it's not, maybe, you know, maybe this is just in my realm of thinking. Um, you decide. Obviously, we have to be believers in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be believers in him. Saved. Believers. Believers. But you know what? We, we've got to do more than just believe. We've got, we've got to put our belief into action. So I know, I know a lot of people who maybe are stuck at that, at that believer stage. And maybe it's been you, maybe it, and it has been me at certain times as well. You're kind of, okay, I'm a believer. I, I know that I'm a child of God. I know that I'm saved, I'm born again. I know I'm filled with the very life and spirit of God. I, yeah, I know that. And I know that. But what, what am I doing about that? You know, I look out at some of you who are, who are out there. You are, I mean, you look at Miss Emma Bruning 
back there. And I'm telling you, that woman, you give her any place in the community and she'll preach to anyone, anywhere, anytime. It doesn't matter if they're young children. It doesn't matter if they're older adults. It doesn't matter because she is winning souls for Jesus. Now, if she were just a believer, if she were satisfied with being just a believer, she would never be doing that. She'd be saying, okay, I can come to church. I can help. I can, I can even serve at church. But, you know, that, that other stuff, really being a disciple of Christ, man, wh- I don't even, first of all, I don't even know what that means and how can I do it. So what I am, I'm a believer. I'm good. I'm good to go. And if Jesus comes, I'm good to go. But there's so much more to living this life that, that God's called us to live than just being right here as a believer. So that's your challenge tonight. That's my challenge because, you know, everything that, um, that I share this evening is because God's already challenged me with that. Man, I see how I lack so much. I mean, seriously. Because what does a disciple really mean? What, what does that really mean? I mean, if, excuse me, if you look it up, you know, in the dictionary, it really means a learner, devotee, a pupil, even a fanatic, or a follower. And a follower is someone who imitates, copies, or takes as a model or ideal. So if I'm, I'm going to use those two those words interchangeably tonight follower and disciple, because really I see them as one in the same. So this is what, you know, this is what God has called us to be, is is followers of Christ, not not just sitting comfortably as believers. And it said in the, in the, um, dictionary that I was looking at online, by the way, which, you know, that it gives you <laughs> varying things, but, but um, it says a disciple of Christ is one who believes the doctrine, believes his teachings, rests on his sacrifice, imbibes, which means to absorb, soak up, consume, and receive his spirit, and imitates his example. I mean, plain and simple. That's, that's, what a, that's what a disciple is. Amen? Amen. Okay, you guys are with me so far, right? Awesome. So, in Matthew 10, 24 through 25, it says, A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher, and a servant like his master. Now in Luke 14, you can just, if you want to write these scriptures down, you can. You don't have to turn there right now if you don't want to. Um, but I encourage you to look at them later. Don't just, don't just write them down and then leave them in your notebook, okay? Um, Luke 14, verses 26, 27, and 33 says, Large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and turning to them, he said, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. In the same way, those of you, those of you who do not give up everything, you cannot be my disciple. And that's, that struck me. It, it, it really, I mean, I've read the scripture many times before. But when it says, in the same way, those of you who do not give up everything, you cannot be my disciple. So I started looking into my own, my own life, and I thought, wow, I give up a lot of things for, for different things, but do I get, give up everything to follow Christ? I mean, that's, that's a big question that we, we have to ask ourselves. And that's, that's one that I asked myself. And I found out, huh, I'm, not, I'm not giving up everything to follow after Christ. I love Jesus with all my heart. 
but, but am, I really, am I really sacrificing for him? No. Oh, no. Am I really, am I really going out on a limb for him? Am, am I willing to just lay down everything? Am I willing to really just, just put, put everything behind me and just follow after him? Gosh, I mean, honestly, everything? But he says right here, I mean, the Bible's that way. You know, it asks some pretty hard questions. In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything, you cannot be my disciples. And I thought, no, because, come on, I want to be your disciple. I, I always say I'm a Christ follower. But am I really? You know? And how many of us are like that? You know, I'm, I'm not pointing fingers at anyone because I don't know where you are, but I know where I am, and I got a lot of work to do. I'll just say that. One of our key scriptures this evening is found in John 8, 31 and 32. And it says, and I have different translations of it, so bear with me because I love different translations and how the, the wording helps bring the scripture alive. But in the New Living Translation, it says, Jesus said to people, said to the people who believed in him, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, you've all heard that. You will know the truth and the truth will set you free. I mean, we all know that. But... Look at the line right before that. It says, you are truly my disciples if you remain faithful to my teachings. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Now, in the Amplified Version, it says, so Jesus said to the Jews who had believed, the Jews who had believed in him, if you abide in my word, which means hold fast to my teachings and live in accordance with them, you are truly my disciples. And you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And another version said, if you continue to obey my teaching. And yet another one said, if you abide in my word, just like one of the previous ones. So we're, we're abiding in his word, we're obeying his teachings, and continuing in his word. I want you to think about that scripture you know, we heard that it, just a moment ago that is, a disciple is not above his master. And that's, um, that's, that's good news for all of us. Um, here's what I know. I know that, that we all want to uh, achieve, achieve things like, like Christ, but we don't want to live like Christ. I mean, we all, we all want to have the achievements like Christ. We all, wanna, we all want to, um, to have all of those things that, that the Father desires us to have, but we don't want to live like it. I mean, let's just be honest. Do we really want to live like that? I mean, look at Jesus. Jesus lived a sinful life. And I think that we, all, we say to ourselves, well, that was Jesus, and it was. But I think that we use that sometimes as, as almost a crutch to say, I know I can't live a sin, sinless life, and we're going to mess up. I, I, I understand that. But are we really trying to live a sinless life? And like I said, I'm, I'm not looking at you. I'm looking these things back at myself. Are we really trying to live a sinless life? A life that's, that's totally pleasing. A life that is imitating the Lord Jesus Christ. Because we're supposed to be imitators, right? We're supposed to be imitators of him. So how is my life imitating Christ? Oh, golly gee. Thank you for God's mercy. That's what I say. Amen. And in, in Ephesians 5.1, it says, Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him. Follow his example. As well-beloved children imitate their father. 
I'm going to read that again. Therefore, be imitators of God. Copy him and follow his example as well-beloved children imitate their father. Yeah. So I thought about that. I thought about how we do that with our earthly fathers, perhaps. Maybe some of you had, had earthly fathers, that there were things that you, you wanted to be like them. You wanted their approval and, and that sort of thing. And maybe some of you didn't. Um, it, it, it doesn't matter either way. It's just an example of when a, little, when a little child is growing up and their daddy is like the most important thing in their lives and they try to copy everything that their dad does. They try to walk like him. They try to talk like him. And I thought about that little child. And then I thought, that's who we are. I mean, that's, that's who we are. We're just, we're just children of the Most High. And how much more should we be saying, okay, Father, I, w- I want to be. I want to be more and more like you. I want to I wanna do what you do. I want to say what you say. I want to see what you see. But are we really doing that? And I don't want this to be like a, you know, a Debbie Downer <laughs> message. But, but I do want to challenge you this evening. And maybe you are, you guys have got it all, maybe you guys have got it just all together. And you are just, you're on it. You're following after Christ. You're, you are doing everything right. Then this message is just for me. And, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Because I want to always keep growing. Amen? Amen. So I was thinking about those things that, um, you know, what does it take to be like him? I mean, what's it really take? And I was th- the first thing I thought about was, you have to be willing to be corrected. <laughs> Brenda's like, Ew. yeah, you do. You have to be willing to be corrected. But the correction is not to, to put the hammer down on you. It's not to like... Oh, I'm just going to seal, I'm just going to pound her because she is not doing what I want her to do. No, correction is for our own benefit, and it's done in love. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why I know that, um, because it says so. Hebrews 12, 5, it says, For considered him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your, in your souls. And it goes on to say, you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For the, whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Whom the Lord loves, he chastens. Whom he loves. And scourges every son whom he receives. If you, are in, if you endure chastening, God deals with you as, as with sons. For what son is there whom, father, whom a father has not chastened? But if you are without chastening, of which all become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Plain and simple. Furthermore, we've had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more be readily be in subjection to the Father of the Spirit and live? For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we might be taker, partakers of his holiness. But he for our profit, not, for, not because he, he's you know, wanting to to put a thumb on us, not because he thinks we're horrible people, but for our profit. I know a lot of you have children, and why why do you discipline your children? For their own good. For their own good. But we have to be ready to receive that. Because remember, God chastens those he loves. That's what the Word says. He chastens those he loves. So how, how are we with 
that correction because that's one of the things, one of the things we must be willing to do in order to be a Christ follower. We must be willing to be corrected because we need it. I know I need it about every time I turn around. Seriously, I needed correction growing up and I still need correction. Amen? And it's for our profit that we might become partakers of holiness. Now, holiness, if you look that up, it means Christ-likeness. That's what, that's what it means, Christ-likeness. Isn't that awesome? And to think, you know, the Bible says, be ye holy for I am holy, to think that it is possible for us to be holy. Oh my goodness, did you ever think about that? It's possible for us to be holy. Do you want to be holy? <laughs> I mean, I think we should. And here's a question then that I, I thought about because someone asked this question. They were talking about sin and um, they were talking about the difference between Yes, we, we sin, um, but are we practicing sin? Because there's a little bit of, there can be a little bit of a difference. Are we, are we continuing to do something that we know is sin? Now, if we go back to that, to that old way of thinking of, yeah, but we can't be sinless because only Christ was sinless, here's what God told me. He said, big excuse. That's just, that's just a flat-out excuse. Now, maybe he'd be kinder with you, but that's kind of how he has to talk to me. It's an excuse. It's just, it's just a flat-out excuse. Um, that's my phone. I'm so sorry. I, I was trying... I'm very sorry. That's embarrassing. So I guess for, for me, I'm just going to say no more excuses. If I'm doing something that's, that I'm practicing and I'm saying, okay, this is a sin, but I, I ask for forgiveness, but mm, I go back and I do it. And then I ask for forgiveness and then I go back and do it. Well, there's at some point, some point, if you're a Christ follower, you've got to break that. You've got to break that sin got to break that chain that's that's holding you down with that and you got to say okay that's it that is it because here's what galatians 5 17 5 16 says it says so i say so i say let the holy spirit guide your lives okay so that's the key let the holy spirit guide your lives then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. Oh my goodness. So I think that's a, that's a key. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives, and then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. We can't live for our own standards, or to our own standards, or with our own set of standards. Our standard is right here. This is the standard by which we live by. And if you're going to be a Christ follower, then this is the standard for you. Because everything that you need to know about being a Christ follower is right here. Remember, we're believers. I know most of you. We're believers. But now it's, it's time to really just, just take a step over and just flat out be a Christ follower. We, we, we gotta, we, we've got to become Christ followers. Amen? Amen. Number two. Can you put my back back up? Oh. Well, okay. Number two. Very quickly. Remember, we have to be willing to be corrected. And number two is like a really hard thing for me. You have to be willing to change. I mean, do, do, does anyone like 
I mean, I like change, but do we like this? Do we like this to change? Anything that's affecting us, do we like that to change? Yeah, not so much. Not so much. Let's read uh, Galatians 2.20 really quickly. Man. Galatians 2.20. I will find it. My old self. Thank you, Jesus. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and who gave himself up for me. Now, if you're not, if you don't have that underlined or highlighted or whatever, I encourage you to do that. Because remember, we must be willing to be corrected and we must be willing to change. And this specifically tells us the importance of that and why. My old self has been, does anybody have an old self? An old self has been crucified with Christ. And it's no longer I, but who lives in you? Christ. Christ lives in you. Think about that. Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. That's what he did for me. That's what he did for you. So if we, if we do not, if we are not going to be willing to be Christ's followers, after what he has done for us, remember he gave himself up for us because he loves us. So to not be a Christ follower in the natural when, when you are a parent and the, you've given everything for the children and you've, maybe you've given everything and yet, yet they're ungrateful or whatever the case may be. They're un, doesn't that kind of might frustrate you on the inside? Well, this is, this is Jesus. <laughs> this is Jesus who gave himself himself up for us. Oh my goodness. We can't be content. We cannot be content to do this anymore. We just can't. Because Jesus gave himself up for us. So if we're not following after him, here's what I know. If we're not following after Christ, then we're usually following after ourselves or someone else. That, I mean, that's the bottom line. We, we really are. I, I can sugarcoat it all the way I want to to make myself feel better about it, but if I'm not following after Christ, then I'm following after something else. Something else has, been more, has become more important than Christ. And we don't like to think of it like that. We don't. Because we know we love Jesus. We want to do what the Father wants us to do, but there's always that, those other things. You know, other things. So we have to be willing to change. We should be growing so much, you know, in our, in our walk with God. We should be constantly growing so much that when people look at us, they should see Jesus. I mean, seriously. There are people in this room right now that I just, I'm always like just amazed by amazed what they're doing for the kingdom. You know, I, I just am like, I just want to just, I don't know, give them hugs or I just want to, I just want to say, I, it's just so awesome what you're doing for the kingdom of God. You know, and then that's, that's what I ask myself, what are you doing for the kingdom? How much are you following after Jesus? Just a thought. <laughs> But, but people should be seeing Jesus in us. They really should. How awesome would that be? If nobody saw you as you. Oh, I would love that if nobody saw me as me for sure. But think about it. And I know Jean's really close. 
She's very close. But I know that how, how awesome would that, when I look at Jean, I see Jesus. And really, I do see Jesus because Jean is always, always, her heart is always following Jesus. But think about that. What kind of world could we change like that? Yeah? Does this make any sense? I think I have to close, and I have a couple more points, but I guess. <laughs> Who's that post of online? <laughs> um, here's, here, I'll just tell you the two other points, and then you can, I don't know. Maybe you can look up scriptures. I don't know. <laughs> Number three is that you must be willing to endure hardship. Oh, stink. Not hardship. <laughs> Come on. We don't have to endure hardship, do we? And number four is you must be willing to sacrifice. Sacrifice and hardship. Whoa, those are two words that we don't like to really hear. And here's, here's what I want to, I want you to look at this. Because each of you should have gotten this at the beginning of this year. And, you know, this, it says extreme devotion it should say extreme devoted followers of Christ because that's what these individuals are. And um, I am really sorry that we didn't get to those last sections, but, but if you are not reading this or if you are, I mean, if this does not touch you, you know, I, I just, I don't know what will, and I know it does touch you, um, it's when you talk about being a devoted follower of Christ, read through the pages because, wow, it will just make you say, wow. So, are we going to be devoted followers of Christ? You know, not just believers, believers on the Lord Jesus Christ, which is awesome. We have to be believers. But it's time for us to be followers of Christ and doing everything that 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 involves and that involves imitating Christ just do what he does just be the way he is sounds pretty simple doesn't it okay well I, I, I appreciate your patience with me this evening and I'm sorry we were jumping around and what have you but um Thank you so much for just um, just receiving the, the word of God tonight. And um, so let's pray, and then we will dismiss you. Heavenly Father, thank you.